So hi, I'm KB with Nerd Files. How are you both? Hi, KB. Lovely to meet you. Listen, I have seen the first five episodes and I love it. Like it is so, so good, truly. Um, so I want to start with you, Sherman. Can you share a little bit about like what was the most creatively challenging episode to craft for you this season? Oh, that's a great question. The mo what is the most? I mean, I can't give too much away because obviously this is a mystery and we don't want to spoil it. There is an episode, it's episode four, that um, uh, is written by Francesca Butler. Um, that was a really tough one because it was about Addison and the judge's relationship. And in, in, in examining their relationship, some secrets are revealed to Addison. You know, I won't, won't go mm -hmm. further. I won't go further than that. But it was a highly emotional, very difficult sort of relationship to craft. And I think um, Francesca did a great job with that. So that was that was one that sticks out as being really tough. Oh, thank you for saying that, because I find that Addison and the judges relationship is truly the most complex because it seems like on the surface, Addison doesn't care, you know, about anyone else other than himself. And I think his siblings say that often, but that doesn't seem to be the case. And this secret, which I, like I said, I only seen the first five, so I know nothing about, seems to be a lot bigger than him, his siblings, his brother, I mean, excuse me, the judge, like it seems to be a lot larger than himself. And so I'm curious to see how that progresses uh, Addison's character forward. So thank you for thank you for saying that. Yeah. Um, and for you, Damien, can you talk a little bit about the creative rewards of being able to really set the tone for the entire series by directing the pilot? Because, you know, a lot hinges on that. Yeah, you know, it does. Um, you know, I, I try to keep, I try not to be so rigid, you know, it's like uh, actors and improv know usually means the stoppage of progress. So I try to direct in the same way. I try to make it, you know, I try to make a pilot so that when our other two directors who helped us with this season came on, because I did six out of the 10, they would have to come in and essentially do the blocks when I needed to prep again. And I'd always say to our DP, Sean, when we were doing the pilot, you know, I want to make this show in a sense that even when Sean goes on to do something else and we have a change of crew, that everyone can make it. Like, I didn't want to set up a show that was harder for the other directors to come in and be like, man, I'm not getting you guys the same quality that you got. So so for that reason, the number one stickler was just to capture the moments very honestly. We have sort of a rule on set uh, on the show, which was, you know, no sides on set. So the actors always came to work 100% prepared. They knew all of their lines. They knew their scene partners' lines. They, no one really called out for the script supervisor. But with that knowledge and with the honesty of the performance, and I like to call it me capturing lightning in a bottle. That's what directing is to me. Each of my actors have that lightning. is just for me to grab that. And I do try to convey that to the other directors that come after a pilot block that, hey, I know this seems crazy, but this is all we're doing here. And I try to simplify that so that we can have an ease of a workspace because this job is tough and it will get tough when you least expect it. So the best thing that we can think is like, I don't really have to think too hard about how we shoot the show, though. Right. I can really focus on the performance and I can really focus on something that tells me, no, the garlands aren't like that. This That was almost more important on this show was to say that the garlands don't do that as opposed to saying, oh, we only shoot these shots on Steadicam here. It wasn't that. It was we are trying to give our audience back a very honest depiction of something that does exist, that is out there in the world. But because we are, I guess, the minority audience, sometimes it isn't depicted as such. Sometimes our stories have to be larger than life for us to even get a simple story. This was a simple story about people who are actually larger than life. Oh, I love the way you said that. Well, let me just tell you, you guys have done a seamless job. I mean, from the acting to the directing, the writing, even the sets and the costuming, um, it's really, really beautiful to see. And I truly cannot wait to see how these uh, final episodes unfold. I'm trying to let y'all go so that I can watch it selfishly. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you both for taking the time to chat with Nerdophiles. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you, KB. Thanks. Have a good day. So, hi, I'm KB with Nerdifiles. How are you both? Hey. Oh, wonderful. Oh, my goodness. I am loving, loving, loving the show. So um, let me start with you first, Grantham. 
Um, so Tell is having kind of a whirlwind of a time. I mean, it's almost as if every single person he is or was close to have a mountain of secrets. <laughs> um, so how do these secrets kind of impact his own mental health? And how do they also kind of inform the man he becomes as the season progresses? Because I've only seen the first five. I think that's a brilliant question because that that's the journey that we're on as an audience. You you kind of watch the show through Tao's eyes in the sense of like, okay, well, this is who his dad was, a revered judge, and this is who his wife is, a revered lawyer who's about to become a judge. And we're seeing all these kind of pillars and people in his life that are supposed to be the closest and most dearest to him who technically been lying or maybe betraying or maybe just not telling the full truth. And as he goes along from being the person who always follows the rules and always listens and is the dutiful son and husband and kind of realizing that, oh, I need to choose my own choices as well. I need to find my path. It does sort of unravel all around him. Sometimes things get messy before you can clean them up. And I think that's the, the journey that we're on with Tao. Oh, I like that you said that they because they definitely are messy. I mean, right now, <laughs> it's like by the end of episode five, it's truly a mess. Um, but you're right. For things to get messy, they have to be cleaned up. And so one of the biggest things that he's dealing with, obviously, is his relationship with his wife, Kimmer. So for you, Paulina, you know, it feels as a viewer, it feels a little like Kimmer is only using Tao and his family name to kind of secure career ambitions. So do you think the love for Tal is really there? Or do you think that like Kimmer will fully choose Kimmer over everything? <laughs> I mean, I think Kimmer does love Tal. Kimmer does love Tal. I mean, I don't think you can share that much of a life with someone and not. I think I think the 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 strain, the initial strain that you see from episode one comes from the fact that they had planned a certain life together and it's not quite where they wanted it to be at the point that we meet them. Um, and maybe as you start to watch it a little bit further, it's where Tao wants it to be, but not quite where Kimmer wants it to be. And that's where kind of um, the ambition starts to take hold. Um, to be fair to Kimmer though, like, you know, she's in a tough spot where she's, has a dream, is on her way to, to achieving the dream. She has the talent, she has the drive, she has the ability to achieve this dream and is given the opportunity, a huge opportunity to take a large step forward. But at the same time, finds out that her husband's father died and anybody who's in a relationship would know that, you know, when things are going amazing for you and terrible for your partner, it's a very difficult situation to be in. Um, so I think, yeah, Kimmer's, Kimmer's in a tough spot, but it creates, you know, mess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's hard. It's hard too, because whenever you're in a relationship with your partner and things are going well, it's still also like that tough spot of you still having to be able to do what's best for you in certain pockets. And I find that like Kimmer's really struggling with being able to do what's best for her, but also still like help a grieving partner. But also there are a mountain of lies from his father. And there's like this side investigation going on, but also they need to keep their jobs and raise their son. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot of mess. <laughs> it is. It is. But it's it's good mess. Listen, um, I cannot wait for audiences to see it truly. Um, I have been telling everyone, like, I'm trying to let y'all go so I can go watch these final three episodes. And <laughs> so I can get the answers myself. And then we can go ahead and come together and have a meeting afterwards, a little debrief um, about well, what happened. Two more after that. It's so a 10 episodes. Yeah. Oh, yes, that's right. That's right. Child, I forgot about the extra two. Y'all just got Yeah, you just got, yeah. You just got, you just got yeah. me. Crunch, I don't know about I don't, I don't know about them answers you searching for. Right, right. Not y'all just. <laughs> I mean, man, but I meant the three that I have right now. So oh, I'm okay, gotcha. Got I'm, I'm trying to do <laughs> you that. You good? You know. <laughs> but my goodness, just I can't wait for audience to see it. And thank you so much for taking the time to chat with Nerdifiles. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. So hi, I'm KB with Nerdifiles. How are you both? 
Yeah, I love your background. <laughs> Thank you. Listen, um, I've seen the first five episodes and it is such a great show. Um, so let me just start with you, Tiffany. For Mariah, it's really her father's death that kind of reignites her passion as an investigative journalist. So what role does grief and Mariah's almost kind of lack of opening up and, and feeling the loss of her father, how does that navigate her decisions on this investigative journey? Um, I mean, I, I think it's it's completely the the lead that is is pulling her along through this journey. Um, it's certainly the catalyst, I think, for really finally confronting maybe where she is in life and how did she sort of end up here um, aside from her her father's death and um, and I also think the investigation though sort of allows her to organically get back into investigative journalism. Um, and in a way where she's, you know, it, it's done in service to avoid confronting the, the grief that she's feeling. And does she have kind of any regrets? You know, her father says to her, don't marry him because you have all of this ambition and it will go away. And he ends up being right. You know, kind of does she resent him a little bit for that? Do you think? I don't I don't believe that she resents him. I think she probably resents like the patriarchy <laughs> or you know the, the 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 culture the system that would have led to this um maybe to you know um her own you know passiveness or the sort of like realization you know they always say like life's what happens when you're busy making plans and i think that um she's maybe realizing oh wait a minute i actually have ended up in with mm -hmm five kids and a husband and wait, what happened to my career? And I'm just, uh, is mom just, is that, is that the, the totality of my identity? Mm, I love that. Um, and for you, Brian, you know, Howard really fell in love with kind of the eager and brilliant woman that is Mariah, but he also offered her a very soft place to land and he never went back on that promise. You know, he's done that and more for her, particularly when she needed uh, it most. But as the season progresses, um, you know, and Mariah kind of gets back into her investigative journey, how does that impact their relationship? You know, does Howard kind of maintain that same level of support he had before or you know, do you think he really tests him? I think it, their support definitely, his support wavers uh, for sure. And and Mariah going down this path uh, jeopardizes their family, the safety of their family. And I think for him, Howard, family is first. And he wants, he, he loves Mariah. He's supportive of her. But if what this journey is going to threaten our family, then you need to reconsider that. And it's a tricky balance of trying to be there uh, for a grieving wife and be there through uh, support her through her mourning, but also trying to keep her in reality. And I do feel like he, you know, he, he knows he, he, he fell in love with her because she's driven and she's strong and he can see that she's unhappy and he I think he does feel guilty and that's another reason why he is so supportive of her um, and he, he's, he's constantly saying you know you know you could chase your dreams he does not want to be the reason uh, for her not to chase her dreams uh, I think he's conscious of that he got exactly the life I think he 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 wanted yeah the life that he set out to. yeah yeah. And so hopefully he's just mostly trying to make sure that she also feels that same way in a sense yeah. like, that she gets the life that she also always wanted to have. Yeah, because he does love her. He wants her to be happy. He's not a sociopath. Okay. Right. <laughs> well, thank goodness, because I cannot take any more drama. I mean, <laughs> I'm like, please yeah. let this marriage survive because we have some other ones on the thread. OK, They're fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you both so much. I truly can't wait for audience to see it. I mean, I think the show is brilliant. It, it's exceptionally good. I'm hoping to get out of here soon so I can finish the, the last three. But thank awesome. you for taking right, time to chat you. with Nerdifiles. Right. So hi, I'm KB with Nerdifiles. How are you both? Good. How are you? Well. Good to see you. Good to see you two doing well. Listen, I love the show. It is so good. But I have only seen the first five. So please do not tell me what happens because I'm trying to watch. Oh, okay. <laughs> this ends, okay? So um, I want to start with you, Jasmine. You know, kind of what secrets lie with Maxine? Because I knew as soon as she stepped foot, you know, uh, off that little roller skating rink, I was like, mm, things are not what they seem with Maxine. And poor Tal is so naive. I was like, mm. 
I love it. Thank you. Thank you for seeing me. We see each other. <laughs> uh, yes, there's so many secrets that she has. And even um, not to like be like, please keep watching, but please keep watching because they keep unfolding. Those secrets maybe come out and maybe you learn she has even more secrets than you thought before. Um, but I think she's one of the most like interesting people I've ever gotten to play. And also one of the most like badass women I've ever gotten to play. So I'm excited for people to meet her. Yeah. Okay. Cause listen, I have not gotten to that part yet, but I'm curious. I'm like, does she have ties to uncle Jack? Is there a connection? Wouldn't you like to know? Well, you've seen five episodes. We've only seen four. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, but anyway, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, oh, we, like, we have the ties that we, for why can I say we have the ties that we're sitting here together right now. Yeah, we got that tie. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, let me call my people and tell them to get you the last four, you know? <laughs> Please, yes, yes. Yeah. And so for you, Tori, you know, truthfully, Uncle Jack is filled with tons of secrets, but I thought, I really did think that he and the judge were were truly friends, but I don't know. The more I watch, I'm like, hmm, what's going on? So do you feel like Jack is truly loyal to anyone else other than himself? That's a very good one. Uh, I would say Jack would answer he is loyal to others especially to his best friend, who is the judge. They go back 50 years, back to uh, college roommate days. And I think the, he sees himself as a, a good friend, a loyal friend, and someone who keeps his word, and he expects others to keep their word. And when the judge maybe doesn't keep his word, he gets angry. And so that's what puts stress on that friendship. But as far as uh, Uncle Jack goes, he would never say that the judge is not his friend. Mm. Okay, now that's interesting because as soon as he threatened Tal, I was like, I don't know, Uncle Jack might not have your best interest at heart, Tal. You might want to run. So yeah. <laughs> it looks that way, I have to admit. It does look it that does. way. It does, but it's interesting that you said he still considers them almost like family, like no matter what's happened. And he, he would, he's, say he's out to protect them. Oh my gosh. Well, listen. I truly cannot wait for everyone to see it because it is such an exceptional series. And please, once you guys, I feel like they need to do like post-mortem interviews for this. Like once the actors have seen all the episodes, once we've seen all the episodes, then we need to come back together and have a huddle about it for sure. We'll be there. <laughs> name the time, name the place. We're, we'll show yes. yes, please. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with Nerdifiles. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Right. Good to see thank you. Good to see you too. Have a good one.